Hi everybody, this is Agnesa from No Sediment and today we are in Napa Valley, so let's talk about its wines. For some, Napa wine history started with famous 1976 Paris Judgment tasting, when wines from here were recognized over more famous French wine producers. However, Napa winemaking history is much older than that and it is filled with ups and downs, and it did not always dictate ultra premium prices for their Cabernet Sauvignon wines. Napa Valley is a relatively large American viticultural area and it integrates many other smaller avas within it. Some of the best known and most sought after are Rutherford and Stag's Leap District. Both Napa Valley AVA and smaller AVAs are simply geographical borders and they do not dictate a winemaking techniques or grape varieties that winemaker must use. This makes winemakers a lot of freedom, allowing them to experiment with different winemaking techniques as well as different grapes. Because of that, there might be huge differences between different brands and winemakers when it comes to style. And that makes even more important for wine consumer to truly know their wine producers. It is often talked about it is often talked that high diur diurnal, diurnal. It is often talked that high diurnal ranges are very important for high quality grape production. However, it is not always the case. For example, in marginal climates, you do not want to have high day and night temperature swings because very low temperature can arrest the grape development or even harm the wines. In warm winemaking regions such as Napa, high diurnal range is actually beneficial and it helps to preserve that very much needed acidity in grapes. As majority of oceanic influence is blocked by Mayakama Mountains here, the high temperature swings between day and night are very important in Napa Valley. In 1976, blind wine tasting organized by Steven Spurrier in Paris, Stag's Leap wine cellars Cabernet Sauvignon vintage 1973 overpassed such famous French wines as Chateau Aubryon and Chateau Mouton Rothschild. This event went down in history as Paris Judgment. Let's go and taste these wines. Cabernet Sauvignon by far is the most important grape variety grown here as it dictates premium prices, especially if compared to other grapes grown here. However, what is now considered to be traditional Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon, rich, full-bodied, highly extracted red wine with soft tannins, ripe and luscious fruit can sometimes be criticized. And there always have been and currently are winemakers who harvest their fruit earlier, ending up with wines showing zestier fruit flavors, lower alcohol levels and brighter acidity. But no matter what the style you or I prefer, it seems that Cabernet Sauvignon plantings here in Napa will increase, often at the expense of other grape varieties. We are in Chateau Montalena. There, 1973 vintage Chardonnay won the famous blind tasting in Paris, organized by Steven Spurrier. But I can tell you a little secret. They actually have quite beautiful Cabernet Sauvignon as well. 
It is very beautiful here. There might be difficult to find a winemaking region that has not plantings, at least minor ones, with Chardonnay, and Napa is no exception. However, it has been losing its ground because of the increasing plantings of Cabernet Sauvignon. Chardonnay from Napa is really dependent on the winemaking choices. As mentioned earlier here by someone, Chardonnay can be 100% of everything. 100% of new French oak treatment, 100% of malolactic fermentation, 100% of lees aging and batonnage, ending up with rich, opulent, bold white wines with expressive notes of vanilla and toast, often showing creamy, almost buttery texture. But Napa Valley Chardonnay can also be steely, lively and fresh, with mouth-watering acidity and linear body. Other grape varieties to note here are Merlot, Poor Merlot, Sauvignon Blanc, and Zinfandel. It is too bad that majority of the wines produced here are not widely available where I am from. So to get the best examples and taste the greatest wines, I simply must come here. And I would also like to say sorry for my voice, which I lost a few days ago, and this is the best I can do right now. I hope you liked my video and if you want to know more about the West Coast wines, make sure to watch my other video on Oregon.